What is going on? Welcome back to Trending Stocks. Today, I want to talk to you about SoFi. I want to go over some of the current data points, break it down on what really happened, and go over everything else you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Always greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get right to it. So SoFi did go down 2.45%. So even though a lot of people do really know that their upcoming earnings is going to be kick-ass, record number of member growth, and so much more, the technicals. Uh, the first part of this week is just going to be based on the technicals. I said that yesterday. I said that over the last weekend. And so far, technicals aren't the best. And so this is why in among itself, despite the Netflix and optimism from their earnings, SoFi did pull down, even though it did bounce off of a very strong support, which generally is a good thing. But I'm going to go over all that uh, near the tail end of the video. Today, there was no SEC filings, no press releases, nothing like that. There was another good analysis that did come out. So the last three were fairly optimistic. So you can see strong buy, buy and strong buy. Aside from that, though, you do see shorts really increasing their position. So today, shorts increased 1.57 million shares, 13.9 98% of the free flow is being shorted and 125.14 million shares overall are being shorted. And over and above that though, looking at this, so cost to borrow average is 1.12%, a little bit higher in comparison to yesterday. And ever since I did bring this up and I did, a, I think a video saying that there's very clear manipulation, cost to borrow minimum has not been negative since. So there was a span of about like two or three consecutive days where cost to borrow minimum was negative, meaning that there was a broker out there physically paying people to short SoFi, as messed up as that is. But ever since I did a lot of videos videos I don't know maybe it's correlated maybe it's not I have no idea but since then I have not seen cost to borrow minimum being negative so interesting to kind of note above that though there's just a lot of fear in the broader market despite Netflix earnings and a lot of optimism for that a lot of people are kind of skeptical about GDP coming out tomorrow because if it is below the forecast which is currently two percent on a quarter by quarter basis then that will signify a sense of slowing and that is exactly what you do not want to hear. I was listening into the Tesla earnings and Tesla right now is down about 5%. And even them, the massive giant of EVs and growth stocks, they said 2024 is going to be very much heavily reliant on interest rates being cut sooner rather than later, straight out of Elon's mouth. So once again, there's just a lot of fear in the market right now and PCE as well is coming out on Friday. So Thursday and Friday are going to be very much dependent on those data points coming out to dictate if we're gonna go higher or lower. When it comes to options though, so currently, or I guess the market did close, but $6.41 million in calls being purchased versus 2.52 million in puts. Sentiment wise, a little bit more evenly divided, but 45% of all the options being done today were bearish. Of the call options that are being purchased, there was a consensus for it to be above $8. So obviously a little bit more of an increase based on this. Looking at the open interest, as I said in yesterday's video, that is something that you need to watch for. There's around 24,000 at that $8 strike price, 20,000 at the 850 and 20,000 at the nine. So market makers do not want to cover that. So you will see a very strong resistance level around $8. So that's something kind of just to consider looking at the puts that were purchased today, it is more so anticipated to be sub $6 by February. And I believe it was February the 9th, or it might have been actually the February the 16th. I can't remember what expiry date I did choose, but I did sell some $6 puts. So if SoFi does go below $6, I get to buy some at six. So pretty good win-win if you ask me, vice versa. If it does kind of stay above $6, I get to keep the premium. So this is the advantage of doing options. So I highly suggest in researching them because they can be very, very beneficial. And if you are curious on some basic tutorials for options, I'll have a link to my other channel. So financial journey, and I go over what is a call option, how to buy it. I go over exact examples in what circumstance you can stand to benefit versus not. I do everything. So I have one for just 
the basic tutorial, calls, and then puts. And then depending on if people want more, I'll do a little bit more advanced stuff, but I don't think that might be the case. But still, moving on though, these are some of the transactions that did occur on the secondary market above $100,000. So you do see a lot of big money getting into SoFi. Not all of it buys though, so based on the bid, the ask, and the selling price, anything that does show a bid is essentially a sell. So of course, this is what did aid in SoFi going down, maybe just some last minute jitters about GDP or potentially about SoFi specific, their earnings, although nothing's really come out to really justify any fear about their upcoming earnings. I have been really monitoring exactly what analysts have been doing, so I'll pop over to that. And while I'm actually on Interactive Brokers, you do see this L8 wave technicals. So it has the pivot point being $8.28. So for as long as it is below that, then it's anticipated to get to around the mid fives, as you can kind of see right there. But analyst forecast though, I have been really watching. There's been no real substantial changes for the revenue estimates or anything like that. So based on this, a little bit more optimism. So it went from about 570 to 571.78 million for their Q4 revenue. But I did want to show you this. So this is data driven investing's Q4 earnings estimates. And so that's the same data driven investing that did this analysis right here on January the 22nd. But their estimates are for new members around 630,000 personal loan, um, new deposits 2.92 billion. So a lot of these metrics would be all time highs and records. So if this is true or even remotely within about 15% of this, then I feel like SoFi is going to have another kick-ass earnings and could really justify for it to go up. As I've said in the past, I feel like based on what it is and what it has previously offered in the past, it should be time and time again at least $9 plus. But then again, what do I know, right? I'm not a financial advisor. So when it comes down to today, it was very much based on the technicals. So it did have a low of 753 and a high of 794. So plain as day, it traded between this pivot and this R2. So it bounced off of both extremes. So 752 was a very strong support that it did end up holding. And then 792 was essentially the very strong resistance that didn't really allow SoFi to get any higher. So going into tomorrow with Tesla Earth, earnings not necessarily being the best and possibly GDP numbers being mixed. That is something just to consider because if it does break below this pivot point, then it might be trading between the 728 and 752. Last Thursday and Friday, it did bounce off this S1 twice. So that's actually what did give it a nice propelling higher momentum. But again, if it does test it a third time, usually what does happen is it does break. So going into the next couple of days, just take some mental notes of some of the very strong support and resistance points. But with all that, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. If you do like my channel and support the growth, take a look at my memberships, link in the description below and also the comments. And with all that said, appreciate all of you watching.